Hi, I'm Tom, and in this video I'm going to try and work out how much electricity my heating system consumes when it's heating my house. We're all aware that a gas boiler consumes gas when it's running, but a heating system also consumes electricity, and I want to find out just how much electricity mine consumes when it's heating my house. So what in a heating system consumes electricity? Well, there's a couple of things. There's small things like the PCB, the electronics inside the boiler. The slightly larger things, like the zone valves, which consume power when they're open. And then there are larger things, like the pumps inside the boiler and the pumps running my underfloor heating system behind me here. To give me an idea of the overall power consumption, I'm going to install one of these. This is a Shelly PM Mini Plus. Part of the Shelly range, this yoke will connect to your Wi-Fi and will measure voltage and current across a circuit. Unlike other power monitor models in the Shelly range, this one doesn't contain a relay, so you can't accidentally switch the power off to the networking equipment, interrupting the internet whilst your wife is on a very important Slack call. Like everything else in the Shelly range, it also integrates really nicely into Home Assistant so you can log and track its all the power usage being recorded by the device. So this beige box here is the wiring center for my heating system. It distributes the power coming in from here and sends it off to the boiler. Off to the sides we have two Shelly 1 relays which control the radiators and underfloor heating. I've done a video about that, how I've replaced um, a, a Tado thermostat with my own control system. Up here there's a Shelly i3 and that monitors the calls for heat coming in from the Mixergy and also from the two relays. The Shelly PM Mini will support 16 amps of current which is more than enough. There's only 3 amp fuse uh, in this switch spur so we can safely add the, the Shelly PM in there without worrying about its power rating. To house the Mini, I'm just going to mount a standard backing box on the wall in the space between the spur and the distribution. And let's do that now. I've installed the Shelly now in place, so the power will come from the fuse spur, will loop through the Shelly and back up into the wiring center. So the little light is blinking, so that means it's ready to be connected to the Wi-Fi. So I'll do that now and then we'll jump over to Home Assistant and I'll set it up and see what sort of power my heating system starts to consume when I switch it on. Okay, so I'm back in my office and we'll jump over to Home Assistant now. So this is my heating dashboard which shows some basic boiler information, uh, thermostats, etc. So what I've done is I've added the Shelly PM into Home Assistant already and I've configured it as part of that dashboard. So we can see now that it's only reporting 7 watts. So the heating is currently idle, there's no power from the burner and the radiator zone valve and the underflow heating zone valve are closed. What I will do now is instead of upping the, the thermostat set point to make the heating turn on is I'll simply engage the zone valve directly. So this will open the zone valve which will then issue a call to heat to the boiler. So we'll start with the radiators. So I'll open the zone valve and we see an immediate jump there and that will be, I'm pr presuming that will be the zone valve itself consuming some power to, to keep it open. And there we go, the boiler has started its burner and nothing's really changed there. We're still looking at about uh, 15 watts. So that's not, that's not a hell of a whole lot. So the next thing I'll do now is I'll open the underfloor heating and we'll see, so that's jumped, that's five watts it's gone up. So that should be the pump and the zone valve. Now, I won't lie to you, that number seems absurdly low. 23 watts for the boiler the fan in the boiler, the pump in the boiler, and the pump for the underfloor heating. That 23 watts, 
minus the sort of five watts for standby that doesn't seem like a hell of a whole lot mm, i really feel like i've missed a trick here what i'm going to do i'm going to check the wiring hub and i'm just going to double check because now that i think about it there definitely is a socket above the boiler and i'm wondering now if there isn't two circuits of energy coming through or coming to two sources of power coming through so one for managing the sort of the thermostat parts the relays and the calls for heating and hot water and then the separate power supply for the pump itself or for the separate power supply for the boiler itself yeah because it's sort of settled at 23 watts but that that is way below i was expecting something upwards of 100 watts uh, and the reason i was expecting that is that's the value i would see on my sort of open energy mon grid pulls normally when the heating comes on there's there's a fairly significant jump and there's a fairly significant jump in the calendar usage so for the months where the heating is on you know sort of october november december january february march we usually consume a little bit more uh, energy there if it was only using 25 watts that's about half a kilowatt for 18 hours which would only amount to 15 kilowatts out 15 kilowatt hours over the the month which is which is nothing so i've got to get my detective hat on and uh, go back down and sort of trace trace all the sources of power coming into the boiler once i've done that i'll record another section of the video and see if i can't shed some light on why this is so low i mean maybe it's supposed to be low maybe this is all it uses but i'm expecting it to be a lot higher much 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 later so i found the problem the shelly was misreporting the wattage but not because there was a problem with the shelly i had simply wired it incorrectly so i'll give you an idea what where of where i went wrong so this is uh, the internal schematics and what i had done was i had taken the power taken the live basically in through this terminal and out through that terminal up to the wiring up to the wiring center rather than taking the feed which is powering the shelly itself uh, so i was essentially bypassing the amp meter completely and because these terminals are bridged it meant that it was working so the current was basically coming in and out and we would have been getting a tiny amount of bleed uh, pulling from this live so uh, once i realized my mistake and that is the importance of reading the manual first uh, i'd assumed incorrectly as it was a single channel monitor that that was the way it worked and to quote jack reacher um, assumptions can kill so that's may a culpa that that's on me so i've rectified the wiring and if we look now, we'll immediately see that even on standby now, it's, it's reporting three times as much wattage coming through. So I can now repeat the tests and we should get some more realistic values. So let me start again as I did by opening the radiator. And yeah, we can see now we've got up now we're talking. So that's climbed up to 28. The boiler hasn't started firing yet so that that's that's a reasonable jump now so that's reporting more already than we had when everything was running and i'd expect that once the pump kicks in in the boiler that this should now start to climb so we'll just keep an eye on the burn up power here yeah it's climbed up a little bit more so i think it's kind of figuring out what it's going to do so we're already up to 40 watts the flow rate is a little bit lower than usual this is normally up around 0 0.26 0 0.27 so the pump may still be the boiler may still be trying to figure out exactly what it needs to deliver but i will now open the underfloor heating valve and we'll see what what effect that has and now that's climbed up to 60 watts more than double what it was reporting before but still a little bit lower than i expected however this is kind of in the order of it's kind of closer to the 
the sort of 100 watts I was expecting. So that's good. So I've kind of rectified that wiring mistake and I'm now getting something that's a little bit more realistic. The flow rate has increased slightly from the boiler so the pump is probably working a little bit harder and I think as as the boiler sort of settles down and kind of gets its modulation kind of figures out what it needs to do I expect this value will climb. Now it is worth noting too that the underflow heating pump is on its lowest setting and I'm not entirely sure that that's correct that will probably need to that'll be need uh, uh, That'll be something I need to adjust. Um, I'm in the process of doing something called, uh, I'm working out something called an index circuit so I can figure out if my pump settings are correct between my boiler and my underflow heating. Um, but, I, uh, and I will do a video on that when I've done that, but uh, for now. So we're up now to, to sort of 65. So that's more than, I would say more than double or it is more than double, it's nearly triple what I was reporting before. So, happy days. So I'll wrap up there. That's been an interesting look into kind of what my heating system consumes. Uh, so it's worth kind of noting that that's something that's always going to be ticking away. It's always going to be drawing some power in the background. So when you're having your heating on, uh, it'll always be using a little bit of electricity. It also kind of helps underscore the the kind of the impact that your boiler has on your electricity usage over long periods of time. So for example, if we if we take away the sort of 12 or 15 watts standby and my system was running now as it is, and I had it on for let's say 18 hours a day, which is probably right for when it's very cold, that'll be drawing about a kilowatt hour uh, in total, or using about a kilowatt hour a day. So that, that adds up, that's, you know, 30 kilowatt hours a month, which is not a small amount of electricity. So I'll wrap up there. Um, hope you found that interesting. It's certainly been an eye opener for me, both in terms of learning to read the manual and also just knowing how much my boiler system or my heating system is actually consuming. Um, if you have any questions, you'd like to know a little bit more about this, please do leave me a comment. If you found this video interesting, please do like and subscribe. And that's it. I'm Tom and thanks for watching.